Hey everyone, so believe it or not, this is Giant Steps. So yeah, that was the harmony to Giant Steps. And the reason maybe it sounded a little different to you is because it was open position chords with voice leading. And I'm gonna explain to you exactly what that means. And I'm gonna break what I did chord by chord by chord so that you understand exactly what happened and how and why and everything. But before I do, let me explain a couple of simple principles to you. Principles that are going to be useful for you to understand when I show you the giant step stuff. I'm going to show it to you on two simple major chords. C major, going to F major, back to C major. I'm going to use all the same techniques on those chords. And once you understand them, the giant step stuff is going to make a lot more sense to you. Okay, so, okay, so here we go. Suppose I want to play a C major chord to F major chord and back to C major. So here, let's do it. That sounds pretty simple. C major to F major, back to C major. What's the issue with playing chords in this way? The issue is you jump a lot and it's not that pretty to jump this much from chord to chord. Jump, jump back. Mm, not that great. Is there another way? Yes. The other way is to voice lead these chords into one another. And what do I mean by that? Well, what is a C major chord? It's C, E, G. What is it? F major chord. F, A, C. Right? Now, if I say it's C, E, G or F, A, C, it doesn't matter in what order these notes are played, right? It could be F, A, C or a, C, F, or C, F, A. And it's all an F major 7 chord, nonetheless. So that's good news for us, because C, E, G, to go to F, we can do this, C, F, A, because F chord is essentially F, A, C, right? Or C, F, A. And since we already had the note C in the first chord, why jump from it? It'll be a lot smoother to just keep it in place and add the other two notes that comprise F major chord. So what did I do there? I voice led essentially. Instead of jumping, I voice led. And notice how the E goes to F in a smooth way and the G goes to A in a smooth way. And the C isn't even going anywhere, it's staying in place. That's about as smooth as it gets, right? <laughs> no jump at all, no movement. So voice leading is basically finding smooth ways to go from chord to chord. And that means when you can keep a common tone, like we did with the note C, you keep the common tone. And the rest is make as small a jump for the other tones as possible. And in our case here, it's a very small jump. Okay, so you understand now, right? Instead of this, I do this. And now I'll show you something even cooler. I'm gonna do the same thing in open position, right? Wide chord position. So what do I mean by that? Like I said, C major chord is C, E, G, right? And the order of the notes doesn't matter. Well, if the order of the notes doesn't matter, why not do it like this? C. G, E. You see why that's still a C major chord? 
because hey as long as there's a C and E and a G it's a C major chord no matter what you see but this is open position this is closed position this is open position just like closed position has inversions like you could do C E G or you could do E G C or you could do G C E so too the open position has its own inversions C G E E C G G E C you see Again, it's all a C major chord because at the end of the day, it's the same three notes. It's C, E, G, in some order or another. Now, remember when we voice led the closed position? C to F to C, instead of jumping. So let's do the same thing with the open position. Like, how would it sound if we jumped? Okay. See what I mean by jumping? I'm not voice leading, I'm just taking the same shape, moving it up, moving it back down. So what would happen if we voice led the open position in the same way we voice led the closed position? Same thing, let's see, our goal is to have C, E, G, which is a C major chord, go to F, A, C, which is F major chord, and then back. So let's see. C, G, E. And remember from the close position, the C is in common, right? C exists in the C major and F major. So, C stays. So, so to here. C, G, E. We know the C can stay. Uh, now, now we need to make sure we have an A in there somewhere and an F somewhere. Because that's what F major chord is. Whoa. You see what I did? I said, okay, where's the closest without jumping that I can get those two notes? So I need an A. Okay, well, this is the closest to the G. I need an F. Oh, I'm already on E. Great, F is right here. And the C stays in place just like it did before in the closed position. So. Right, you see? It's C major going to F major going to C major. Okay, so that's how you move from chord to chord. Like if you want to give me like, okay, go from C major to A flat major. A flat major is A flat, C, E flat. See, that's A flat, C, E flat. From here, go to F minor. F minor is F, A flat, and C. Like I said, F, A flat, and C. From here, go to D minor. D minor is D, F, A. D, F, A. From D minor, go to, I don't know, to D flat major. D flat major is D flat, F, A flat. Right? D flat, F, A flat. It's the same as this. So you can go from chord to chord to chord in this way. Now from here, I hope you're starting to get the point. No matter what set of chord changes you're working with, you're always going to be able to voice lead everything and make it sound nice and beautiful without jumping. And it creates this really fluid, beautiful voice led sound. That's not just like... Right, not that. You could actually voice lead this stuff. And that's what I did in the beginning of the video and that's what I'm about to show you right now. So I decided I'm going to play giant steps in an open position. So not like this, but like this. Open wide position. So what is the harmony in giant steps? Let's just take the first part. D major, D major, G major, B flat major, and E flat major, right? So... So... So how can we voice lead that? in open wide position. Okay, so the first chord is B major. The next chord is D major. Okay, so B major is B, D sharp, F sharp. D major is D, F sharp, and A. Okay, so F sharp we have in common. Now we just need a D and an A. 
Where can we get the D from? We can get the D from this E flat going down just a little bit. And we can get the A from this B going down a little bit. And we have a D chord right there. See what I did? Again. B major is B, D sharp, F sharp. And now we need to go to the next chord, which is a D chord. And the D chord is D, F sharp, and A. So we already have an F sharp in place, so we're going to keep that in place. Now we just need a an D and an A. Where can we get that? Well, there's a D right here underneath this E flat. So that E flat is going to go down. And there's an A right there underneath the B that we had. And that B is going to go down. And boom, all of a sudden we have a D major chord. So... Okay, now we're in B ma D major. The third chord of Giant Steps is a G major. So we're in D for now. What is a G major chord? G major chord is G, B, and D. Right? So we already have a D from the D major. All we need now is some kind of G and some kind of B. We're going to find them somewhere. Oh, look, there is a G right above this F sharp. And there's a B right above this A that we were playing. So see how smooth? So beautiful. Let's play all three chords in a row. Yeah, it's the same as playing, but in open position and with voice leading. See, it's the same chords. So let's see what do we have so far. B major, D major, G major. Next chord is B flat major. B flat major is B flat, D and F. We already have a D, so that's going to stay in place. And now we just need B flat and F. Oh, look, the B flat can come from this B. It just has to go down half a step. And the F can come from this G. It has to go down a step. That's really close. Those are not big jumps. So that's proper voice leading then. See, that was G. That's B flat. All you have to keep in mind is what are the three notes that comprise this next major chord and how can I get to them the closest way possible, the smoothest way possible with as little jumping as possible and hopefully with one note staying in place if possible, when possible. The next chord in giant steps is E flat major. E flat major is E flat, G and B flat. Right, so we already have B flat. <laughs> so we just need E flat and G. Oh, look how convenient. The E flat is right above our D and the G is right above our F. So and that's how we got from B flat major to E flat major with nice voice leading. Cool, right? So it's the same. This is the same as this. But the reason they're the same is because both ways you're playing those same three notes per chord. You're just playing them in kind of a different order. And you're making sure to voice lead them properly. So what do we have? See? Those two things I just played are exactly the same. Except this sounds kind of dumb. And this sounds nice and musical and fluid. You see? Let's do the next part. So we have A minor to D. So... A minor is A, C, and E. Right? We're not going to have any notes in common here. So all we have to do is try to jump as little as possible. We can go two ways from here. We need A, C, and E. So maybe this is going to be a C, this is going to be an A, this is going to be an E. Or it could be... You go the other way. This could, this could become A, this could become E, this could become C. No, I like the other one better. It's less jumping. Right? So now we're at A minor, we need to go to D major. So, right, so A minor, 
D is D, F sharp, A. So we have the A, it's gonna stay in place. This E can go be F sharp, and this C can become D. So now we jump to D that way. You see what I'm doing? Now this is something you can do on a piano. This is something you can do on guitar. This is something you can even do on bass, believe it or not. And if you're a wind instrument, this kind of outlining of chords is something you can do in the middle of your solo. And that's actually going to sound really awesome, even though you can only play one note at a time. You can outline these arpeggios in this way. So that's kind of the principle. The principle should be clear to you. Keep in mind what the next chord is, what the three notes that comprise that chord are, and try to go to those three notes from your current three notes in a way that doesn't make you jump very far from note to note, right? Not None of that. None of that, right? Whether you're playing in close position like this, or an open position like this, Always voice lead. Voice lead as much as possible. Voice leading is awesome. It's amazing. It's how you make every chord note have its own melody line. Check it out. Like, it's not really a melody, but the. Right? That's a melody. Right? That's the melody of the top voice. Let's do let's see what the melody of the middle voice is. Right. That has a melody too. Let's see what the melody of the bottom voice is. See, that's a melody too. This way, each one of the chord notes gets to be sort of a member of the chord and gets to have its own sort of show because every chord note this way has a melody of its own. It's kind of like the way we live in societies. You are both a citizen and society and you have duties towards a society like paying taxes and like treating people nicely and not stealing. But at the same time, you have your own individual life and you do what you love and you have your family and you have vacations and do other things that are just for you, are not for the society. And that seems to be the perfect kind of harmony between the individual and society. When you're functioning as a proper member of society on the one hand and when you're functioning as a full-blown proper individual on the other hand. So too in musical harmony. Voice leading allows you to have each one of the chord notes be both a member of the chord and have its own individual melody. And that's when harmony sounds the best, because nothing gets sacrificed for the sake of anything else. The chord tone is both a chord tone and a melody note of its own. Even if there's five chord tones, if you voice lead those properly, all five will end up having their own beautiful melodies. And the way you create those melodies without even intending to is by trying to jump as little as possible inside every voice. Remember, I was trying to find the closest place I could go to in every chord note when I was trying to move from chord to chord, right? And because I'm taking such good care of not jumping, I end up having these beautiful melodies inside each voice. And this comes to us from classical music, but it works everywhere. <laughs> And that's Giant Steps voice lead, gang. As you can see, you could voice lead any set of chord changes in open or closed position. I really suggest no matter what instrument you play, you should practice this on the piano. Maybe not Giant Steps, maybe some other song, but be able to voice lead triads. Believe me, whether you're a bass player, a trumpet player, a saxophone player, sit on the piano, and be able to voice lead chords into one another. 
If not open position, then close position. Hopefully both. You know what? I have an idea. Why don't you record a little video of yourself voice leading something? Just record yourself voice leading stuff and post it as a video response to this video. I promise I'll check it out and give you my opinion of what I thought you did great and what I think you should do next to keep expanding your harmonic abilities. That's about it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little something too. I make a lot of content like this on this channel. So if you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more free lessons, tutorials and vlogs of my tours all over the world. If you're already a subscriber, hit that notification button so that you get notified every time I release a new video. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Peace.